It was the spring of 2009. U.S. President Barack Obama was just settling into the White House when the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, informed him that a new influenza virus had suddenly appeared in kids in Southern California and was likely to spread around the world. The global pandemic that scientists feared had finally arrived, only no one predicted it would come from North America. National security advisors and public health officials had been warning the White House for years that dangerous flu viruses were circulating in birds that were only a handful of mutations away from jumping to humans, potentially sparking a pandemic like the notorious 1918 influenza outbreak that CL. But U.S. health officials expected the next globe-trotting virus to arise in Asia, the hotbed of zoonotic pathogens such as H5N1, or bird flu, and the severe acute respiratory syndrome, SARS, virus, which nearly caused a pandemic. So they were caught off guard when cases of a new disease started appearing in children in San Diego in April 2009. Officials were doubly surprised when the virus came from pigs. All three influenza pandemics of the 20th century were bird strains. Even more baffling, the virus had an unusual genome, with pieces derived from three different swine influenza lineages, including a Eurasian lineage not previously observed in the Americas. As the new virus spread around the globe, sickening millions and killing hundreds of thousands of otherwise young, healthy people, Obama's advisors had no answers for how the unusual virus had evolved and where or when it jumped from animals to people. After diagnostic testing rolled out globally, it appeared that the epicenter of the pandemic had been in central Mexico. A colorized transmission electron micrograph of H1N1 flu virions rumors began to circulate that the virus, which was spreading rapidly among humans through contact and aerosols, was engineered by human hands. The CDC scoffed, but the World Health Organization, WHO, announced that it was seriously investigating a memo sent to the organization by Australian biologist Adrian Gibbs who laid out his evidence for why the virus was not of a natural origin but rather had leaked from a laboratory performing genet. A man-made pandemic virus was the last thing the world needed. Years of progress against vaccine-preventable diseases had already been undone by British Dr. Andrew Wakefield's falsified autism MMR link, which would not be retracted for another year, fully 12 years after its publication. Soon, though, two seminal studies soundly refuted the lab leak theory and revealed how the virus arose in pigs. The detailed evolutionary history spanning several decades was more than we had learned about most animal sources of other zoonotic outbreaks. Many felt the book on the pandemic's origins was effectively closed. Still, some bits of the story didn't add up. Namely, the prevailing notion that the virus came from pigs in Asia. I had recently joined the National Institutes of Health, NIH, to study influenza in humans, but the pig story piqued my interest. So, I switched to researching pigs. Dropping human research to study swine might seem like an ill-advised career move, but I had an unusual amount of freedom at the NIH. I wasn't living grant to grant like most epidemiologists, so I could follow my hunches. It ultimately took our international team seven years to track the smoking pig to an unstudied corner of pig farming. Along the way I learned that raising a pig, and a pandemic, is more complicated than anyone imagined. Still, tracing the origin of a pandemic, even long after the fact, can be done using genetic data, and the full understanding of how a disease emerged is worth the years of sleuthing. As a result, the virus sat on a long branch of the influenza phylogenetic tree, separated by many mutational differences from other swine flu viruses. Also, the virus's proteins had an abundance of lysine residues. This idea did not hold up long against scientific scrutiny. All five of the WHO's collaborating influenza centers evaluated Gibbs's claims, and all arrived at the same conclusion. There was no reason to believe the virus was unnatural. Human, avian, and swine flu viruses naturally differ somewhat in lysine composition, and the amount of lysine seen in the strain responsible for the 2009 outbreak was consistent with natural increases seen in swine flu viruses historically.
The genetic distance, too, proved unremarkable. A veterinarian takes a blood sample from a pig's leg. Scientists had a wealth of genetic data from swine influenza viruses for fact-checking. As veterinarians have routinely performed diagnostic testing, sometimes sequencing entire viral genomes, to combat flu and monitor viral trends. And that data revealed many swine flu viruses are somewhat isolated on the phylogenetic tree, the result of insufficient sampling temporally and geographically. Research teams from the U.S. CDC and Hong Kong University used these genetic data to catalog the natural evolutionary origins of the virus in fine detail in studies published in Science and Nature, respectively. Both studies showed that the pandemic virus's genome belonged to the H1N1 subtype, which is found in swine globally, and concluded that the virus arose through natural processes. But an unresolved question was where? The exact origins of the 2009 virus were difficult to pin down because flu virus genomes are composed of eight individual segments that can be swapped in their entirety during replication when two parent viruses coinfect a single host cell. This creates genetically new offspring in a process known as resortment. And the 2009 virus epitomized why swine are called mixing vessels for avian and human strains. The eight segments of the pandemic virus genome had notably different evolutionary histories connected to three geographically distinct swine flu lineages, some of which were introduced into pigs from B. The remaining five segments were derived from the triple reassortant lineage that emerged in U.S. pigs in the 1990s and was itself a mix of avian, human, and classical swine influenza viruses. They had found new swine flu viruses in abattoirs on Hong Kong that resembled the 2009 H1N1 pandemic more closely than any other swine virus known globally. Viruses whose genomes were mixes of segments from the same three swine flu lineages as the pandemic virus. Although none contained the exact same segments as the newly emerged pathogen, the authors noted that all three major genetic components of the virus were found in swine in Hong Kong, which routinely receives pigs from mainland China. So, it seemed reasonable that a perfect segment-by-segment -segment match would eventually show up with additional sequencing. After all, China hosts half the world's swine population and only a tiny slice had been sampled for flu. Plus, the genetic sequences of the flu viruses from Hong Kong's pigs were more closely related to the pandemic virus in terms of mutational distance than viruses sampled from pigs elsewhere. The paper included strong caveats, especially with regard to sampling. But an Asian origin scenario was easy to accept because it fit with Asia's historical role as the source of H5N1, bird flu, SARS, and two previous influenza pandemics, in 1957 and in 1968, and matched where scientists presume. Still, there were lingering gaps in the story that bugged experts in the field, myself and the nature study authors included. Where the new virus overlapped with Asian sequences, there were mutational differences that suggested many years of unobserved evolution. What was the virus up to during that time? Plus, from a clinical perspective, the first major outbreak in humans occurred in North America. Weeks before the flu was first identified in California, clusters of an unusual pneumonia appeared in Mexico. And no one had found an animal with the exact same virus strain. That is to say, there was no smoking pig. The hunt for the smoking pig a White House nurse prepares to administer the H1N1 vaccine to then-President Barack Obama on December 20, 2009. But the question of the virus's origins remained a topic of discussion among a small group of pathogen hunters and evolutionary biologists who met informally in Leuven, Belgium, a small Flemish city renowned for its beer and chocolate. Please support my channel to grow by pressing subscribe button and the bell icon, we will notify you technological news. Thank you.